I think it's easy to focus on the things that are different about this year. Think of what you can do. We easily could have just said, like, this is too much work, which I think would be very counterproductive to what kind of message we're trying to send here, trying to solve challenges. A big thing this entire year is just learning how to adapt to a new environment, because this is new for all of us, and that's something I keep reminding myself in, that we're all in the same boat. Got something from one of my RAs, and she said, Dr. D, we want to do crafts, and they're going to do them on Zoom. And that's the spirit that I think really exemplifies in our campus community. That's where we're going to see students as they innovate around and come up with creative solutions to still be productive in their classes, uh, but doing so at a distance. Last night I met with some girls on my floor in our RA and we picked up food from the dining hall and all sat kind of on the lawn out here, totally socially distanced and we we're seeing everyone doing the same as well. I think we're so lucky to be here and it's important to take care of the community that Vanderbilt emphasizes so much. Good morning, everyone, and thank you for joining us today for this special event with Vanderbilt Chancellor Daniel Deermeyer. My name is Veer Shaw, and I am this year's student body president of Vanderbilt Student Government. It is an honor to serve in student government and be an advocate for my peers. I'd like to thank all of you for supporting and encouraging us on our academic and personal journeys. We could not do this without you. Today, I'm thrilled to be joining you from a beautiful new connector building on the Peabody campus that has brought together two historic structures built in 1914 and added 10,000 square feet of space. This connector building features active learning and configurable classrooms and joins the home economics building, recently named Six Magnolia Circle and the Mayborn building. Both buildings have also been recently renovated and include new classrooms and event space. Chancellor Deermeyer is here with me and you will hear a university update from him soon, followed by a Q&A based on the questions you submitted. Next, I'd like to introduce Anne and John McDonald, co-chairs of Vanderbilt's Parents and Family Association Board. They are proud parents of two children, one of whom is Kenzie, a senior studying computer science in Vanderbilt School of Engineering. The McDonald's have been active members of the Parents and Family Association Board for several years, in addition to serving as co-chairs this year. Their commitment and philanthropic support of Vanderbilt has made a significant impact in the lives of students and faculty. Mr. and Ms. McDonald's, thank you for being with us here today. Thank you, Veer, for that kind introduction. And good morning, everyone. Greetings from California. It is our pleasure to join you today and to introduce Chancellor Daniel Deermeyer. He will update you momentarily on the latest developments at the university. After he speaks, he will share a special message to parents and families from Vanderbilt students and then Veer will moderate a Q&A with him. We will conclude with a performance with Vanderbilt's a cappella group, The Melodors. We also encourage everyone to register for two upcoming events later this month. We Know What You're Thinking, a guide to career conversations on Wednesday, October 21st at 7 p.m. Central, and a panel discussion about the Student Care Network on Tuesday, October 27th at 7 p.m. Parents will hear directly from representatives from the Center for Student Wellbeing, the Office of Student Care Coordination, the Student Health Center, and the University Counseling Center. You will also have the opportunity to submit questions when you register. You can register using the link in the chat box today. Also, we hope you tune in to the SEC Network this morning, 11 p.m. Central, to watch the football game. The Doors take on South Carolina right after today's events with the Chancellor. As you may know, Danielle Deermeyer took the helm July 1st as Vanderbilt's ninth chancellor. A visionary leader and lifelong academic, he is dedicated to advancing Vanderbilt's mission and values at every level across the university's 10 schools and colleges. Born in Berlin, Germany, Chancellor Deermeyer is a first generation college graduate and most recently was provost at the University of Chicago. He is an internationally renowned political scientist a management scholar and a fellow of the American Academy of Arts, the Guggenheim Foundation, and the Canadian Institute of Advanced Research. He brings to the role his proven ability to connect to people and ideas across disciplines to harness scholarship and research as forces of good. He believes in the power of education and in the mission of our university to transform lives and move society forward, particularly in moments like the present 
when higher education's role is more critical than ever. We will share also a brief video and after which you will hear from the Chancellor directly. Chancellor Dearmar, thank you for speaking to us today and thank you to everyone who is on the call and Zoom in today. I'm just here to welcome you to this uh, most unusual of all semesters ever. People have been tirelessly working over the last month. Everything from how do we set up the seating, the testing and contract tracing protocols. So we have the best plan in higher education and I don't say this lightly. Have a great, great semester. Enjoy the class and enjoy your time at Vanderbilt. Good morning, everyone, from a very rainy Nashville. And thank you, Anne and John, for the introduction and for your leadership as co-chairs of the Parents and Family Association. And thank you to all of you here today, Vanderbilt parents, friends, and family members. Your engagement and impact are especially meaningful during this unprecedented year. This is typically a time for all of us to gather on campus and for you to spend time with your students, but this year is different. As a parent of college students myself, I understand the challenges that come with holding this event virtually. Thank you for being here with us today. I'd also like to thank the many university leaders who are watching us today. They are among the many people who have been instrumental and have worked tirelessly to making this semester a success. We're working together long hours across schools and divisions to fulfill our mission and create the best possible student experience from every angle. Whether your student has been on campus or engaging remotely this semester, I know the last six months have not been easy. We all had to endure new challenges, made sacrifices, and continue to face uncertainty, even though we are strengthened by our sense of community, our one Vanderbilt spirit. We are in this together, united by our mission to provide an empowering education to our students. What drew me and many of our students to this great university is Vanderbilt's collegial culture and values. We are a world-class research institution, but we also a residential community that values camaraderie. We invited students back to campus this fall because we're committed to an education where different people with varying backgrounds and perspectives can come together. We needed to create an environment where students can engage, have impromptu conversations, share their interests and passion and can grow as whole persons. This is what higher education is all about. Returning to campus this August was not the easy path. It was tough challenging and required hundreds of people of work, or hundreds of people to work together for long hours every day. But we chose this path because our mission demands it. Indeed, many of our peers have taken a different direction. Several institutions have gone fully online. Many are primarily online. Others have only invited some of their students back to campus. Vanderbilt is unique and that the majority of our undergraduate students are here on campus learning in person. And those that chose or could not join us in person were able to participate in our classes remotely. We are now more than halfway through the fall semester, that semester unlike any other, and we're off to a great start. But we remain at a pivotal juncture. Things literally can change at any moment. Our fall campaign, Anchor Down and Step Up is about continuous effort and responsibility. Each student must step up to protect the entire community. This has meant wearing face masks, physical distancing, limiting gathering and getting tested and quarantining when needed. We have asked every member of our community to anchor down and step up and we have done so. Our students have done a remarkable, a phenomenal job, and I couldn't be more proud of what they have accomplished. But this is a marathon, not a sprint. 
We're urging all of our students to continue to be honest and transparent about contract tracing. Contract tracing is essential for us to be able to continue to work together, to undergo weekly testing, and to fully grasp the consequences of not abiding by protocols. We all must work together to support our students and inspire them to do their part. And that is a very important role, particularly for us as, pardon, as parents. As part of the Anchor Down Step Up campaign, we're also encouraging community members to anchor down and check in, not only on themselves, but also on their friends, classmates, and colleagues. We're dedicated to educating our students socially, intellectually, and emotionally, and their well being is central to our mission and of paramount importance. All students at any time are encouraged to seek support to the Office of Student Care Coordination. And the team works closely with the student care network and other resources in the national community to provide students with the care and support that they need. In preparation for the challenges of this semester, we enhance staffing and training at the Vanderbilt Student Care Network. We're offering increased telehealth options, targeted programming, and free access to Headspace, which is a meditation and sleep app designed to reduce stress. From apps to in-person appointments and coaching at the Center for Student Wellbeing, there are many resources available to our students. And we will continue to assess and add to these resources as we move forward. This is an important aspect. Nobody has ever done this before. Nobody has ever brought students back to campus before during a global pandemic. Our plan is great. Our plan has been well-designed, but we need to continue to adapt and change as, we, as conditions change as well. We also understand the profound importance of socializing and camaraderie when it comes to overall well being. In addition to our mental health and wellness initiatives, we're maximizing opportunities for students to come together, relax, and have fun in a safe way. Our nearly 130 acres of outdoor space on a beautiful campus have been the backdrop for many, for many such activities, from student circles to Frisbee, while other students are turning to arts and crafts. Around 2,000 of our students got tickets to attend the first home football game last weekend to cheer on our Commodores in person while masking up and physically distancing. Residence Hall have been hosting weekly programs and group experiences, and one faculty head of house is leading outdoor circuit training as a way to encourage students to spend time away from their computers and connect face to face. Students in Istanbul residents are getting to know each other through speed friending, where they can learn as much as they can about their speed peers within one minute. In addition to meeting fellow first years, they also get to know upper division students and potential mentors. The dining facilities have been expanded to include outdoor tents so students can enjoy leisurely meals together in the fresh air. We've also expanded our collaboration with Taste of Nashville. So students have more to choose from when opting for contactless delivery while in quarantine. Students who have chosen or could not return to campus have also been connecting. Many student groups focused on fitness, gaming, puzzles, photography, music, dance, and many other pursuits are meeting virtually and helping to form meaningful connections. Being a Vanderbilt student begins with academics, but truly encompasses the whole person, socially, emotionally, and intellectually. We care about our students, not just as scholars, but as human beings. Because of your and our students' efforts, we're off to a great start. Earlier this week, parents received an email from Provost Venti and myself with details regarding the academic calendar for the spring. We plan to continue offering in-person on-campus classes this spring, governed by our current safety protocols, suitably updated as conditions change. And we will also continue to offer remote learning to those students off campus to virtual and alternative platforms. As part of our efforts to protect the community as much as possible, we will not be having a spring break this year. 
this was a tough and difficult decision, but one that makes a serious effort to limit transmission of the virus to off-campus travel, which has been one of the main contributors of the recent increase in cases, especially in the European Union. Many of our peers will be taking the same precautions. It's unfortunate, but it's necessary. That being said, I understand, of course, the importance of breaks and relaxation for all of us as a change of pace and a change to wind down and catch up. We know the pace of a normal semester is demanding on its own, and our current circumstances bring additional and new challenges to our students. We'll be asking our faculty in the coming weeks to consider the rate and pacing of the spring semester and their design of course curriculums and think about the range of needs that might arise when having a 15 week block schedule without a spring break. Further details about the academic calendar for the spring can be found on the Return to Campus website, in addition to responses to our frequently asked questions. Plans for the spring semester have been front of mind as has the latest data, expertise, and guidance from our colleagues at Vanderbilt University Medical Center, as well as local and regional public health officials. And their partnership has been instrumental, instrumental for us over the last months. In other words, we know this pandemic is not over and we're prepared to pivot and adapt swiftly in the coming in weeks. And yet, at the same time, we have been careful not to lose sight of our long-term goals. Those ambitions that will lead Vanderbilt for decades to come. We're prepared not only to endure uncertainty, but also think strategically and optimistically about what lies ahead. We can be proud, but we should never be satisfied. And as we look to the future, one of the issues that remains top of mind for us is equity, diversion, and inclusion. This is both a long-term focus for us and an urgent priority. By many means, by many measures, Vanderbilt has made exemplary progress here. This year, for example, student diversity is at an all-time high. Many of our students will, in all likelihood, experience a much more diverse community at Vanderbilt than they have ever before in their lives. They will be able and encouraged to connect with students who look, act, and think differently than they do. And that's a crucially important component of every great education. We can benefit from, the, from diversity of many forms, spanning race, gender, and socioeconomic backgrounds, and points of view. The more ways in which we differ, the wider our collective knowledge. Diversity and inclusion are also tied to access. Vanderbilt remains fully committed to making a world-renowned education accessible to all qualified students, regardless of their economic circumstances. This happens through Opportunity Vanderbilt, which had met 100% of demonstrated financial aid for nearly 12,000 students since the program's launch in 2008. Our timely efforts also include the Student Hardship Fund we launched this spring in response to the, specific, to the specific challenges posed by COVID-19. Right now, these programs matter more than ever. Vanderbilt continues to provide broad support for our students, and we're not backing down, even in the face of economic uncertainty. Our ability to do so will help us to attract more of the best and brightest students from America and around the world. As the first person in my family to graduate from high school or college, and as somebody whose career has been supported by grants, fellowships, and scholarships based on the generosity of others, I fully understand the transformative power of an accessible education. I want to thank all of you who have supported this most important effort to bring all students that can benefit from a Vanderbilt education to campus. We're also continuing our master plan for residential colleges. This fall, we opened the Nicholas S. Zeppers College and are planning to add additional residential colleges during the next few years. Our residential colleges are central to our mission. 
they ensure that at Vanderbilt, learning does ju doesn't just happen in the classroom, but continues outside in dining halls and as students continue their discussions as they walk back to their residence halls. This approach is teaching our students not just about specific skills or subjects, but how to grow and thrive as people. It's teaching them to think deeply about their relationships and their personal responsibility. And in turn, they're building grit and resilience in response to a historic challenge. There are few things that can bring a community together like athletics. And the Vanderbilt way is about supporting student athletes on and off the field. This unprecedented situation undoubtedly has presented many and new challenges, but it's also an opportunity to help our student athletes grow and prosper in different ways and in spite of adversity. I attended the first football game last weekend and was reminded of the raw emotion and camaraderie that comes from cheering on your team. There's another home game tonight, right after this event at 11 a.m. Central Time, and we hope you will be able to tune in online and cheer on our, as our Commodores as they take on South Carolina. Done right, athletics can represent what is best of us. Great talent and determination, perseverance, teamwork, to commit the, the commitment to improve and the triumph and heartbreak that comes from participating in athletic competition. The important part of Vanderbilt's culture, and we're committed to supporting them by investing in facilities, engagement strategy, the fan experience, and recruitment. <coughs> and we will continue to invest in faculty, the core pillar of our current and future success. Just last month, just last month, we launched an ambitious program to attract the best faculty to Vanderbilt. Destination Vanderbilt is a major new initiative to recruit exceptional new faculty and rising stars over the next two to four years. We're levering our strong academic reputation, our resilient financial position to recruit the best of the best at a time when many universities are being forced to put recruiting on hold or pull back. As example of the caliber of talent we're working to attract to join our stellar faculty, we're proud to already welcome three new faculty to Vanderbilt in 2021. Michael Eric Dyson, a renowned scholar of religion, race, and African-American culture. Major Jackson, a distinguished poet as the Gertrude Conaway Vanderbilt Professor of English. And Shatima Threadgraf, Associate Professor of Gender and Sexuality Studies and Political Science. These hires exemplify, exemplify the scope of our ambitions and they lay the foundation for sustained eminence for the future. They remind us that despite our imminent obstacles and uncertainty, Vanderbilt is well positioned to thrive for many years to come. Whether your students are here on camp campus or participating remotely, they're all part of a defining moment for higher education and for our world. They have stepped up to the challenge of a generation. And thanks to their effort, I know that we are positioned to look back at this time and say, this was our proudest moment. Thank you again for being here today and continue to anchor down and step up. Before we move, into this question and answer session, I'd also like to share with you a special message from our students to you. Hey, mom and dad. Hey, mom and dad. Hey, mom and dad. Hi, mom. I am walking to class right now. I know this year is a little bit different and you can't come for parent week, but I do want to let you know that I love you and I miss you. And I'm looking forward to seeing you as soon as I possibly can. I appreciate all the love and support that you guys give to me day in and day out. What's up, Mom and Dad? If you don't remember, this is your son, Zach. I just want to thank you guys for everything you have done and continue to do for me. Thank you so much for your support, even from many, many miles away. Being able to talk to you on the phone has gotten me through so many tough points. You guys are my rock. 
got the muffin you sent me, and I ate all of it, and it was very yummy, but I promise I'm eating healthy things too. I'm so grateful for all the love and support, the piano lessons and the composition lessons and all these books that I, <laughs> I still have. I'm so grateful for that have helped me come all the way to Vanderbilt here. We're gonna make you proud, doing our best in our academics and our extracurricular activities to make sure that we're representing our family in the Vanderbilt community. I'm so excited to come show you around campus once everything clears up, but all is well. I'm having fun, my classes are great, and I can't wait to see you in November. Without all the sacrifices you have made, I know I wouldn't be where I am today. So I just wanted to let you know that I love you and I appreciate you. I can't wait to see you guys soon. And I want you to know that I love you and I miss you more than you could ever know. I want to add on to that video with a message to my own parents. Mom and Dad, I just want to let you know that I'm doing well and finding new ways to connect with my friends and taking care of myself this semester. I also want to tell you I appreciate you more than ever. You came to this country and sacrificed so much to get to where I am today. You taught me perseverance and grit, and I hope I'm making you proud here at Vanderbilt. Thank you, I love you, and I miss you. And I promise that I'm eating more than just ran cookies this semester. Now we'll move on to a question and answer session with Chancellor Diermeyer. On your screen, you'll see a list of many other vice chancellors, vice provosts, and other university leaders who have tuned in today. I'd like to thank all of them for being here and for being willing to jump in on some of the questions that came through for the Chancellor. Chancellor, thank you for the wonderful update you just provided. And we have some questions that parents asked that relate to some of what you discussed, plus some on a few other topics. With that, our first question is one that we received from a few parents. Will students still continue weekly COVID testing in the spring? Thank you, Veer. Um, we are still evaluating um, our testing protocols. Um, at this point, we are, we are planning on continuing weekly testing and uh, continue to plan so in the spring. Um, regular widespread testing, we believe, has really been essential together with our efforts on effective contract tracing to halt the spread of the virus. And when there were cases to react forcefully and effectively. Every decision that we've made um, over the last uh, months, now it's almost half a year, has been guided by our partnership with Vanderbilt University Medical Center uh, and our School of Nursing. And uh, we will continue uh, to talk to them and um, heed their advice so that we make sure that all our plans are based on the best public health information and the clinical information available. Of course, if there are any changes to our testing frequency or testing policy, they will be communicated to our entire campus community, our students and our parents. The next question is from a parent who focuses on the experience that for students who are learning remotely. She asks, how do you feel remote learning has been and does the university have plans to enhance the remote experience for students for the spring semester? Yes, yeah, so one thing that we have done is that during the summer, we worked very hard and our faculty did a tremendous job. Uh, in adapting their courses to the new hybrid learning model so that all students can really connect and participate um, with the classes, whether they're here in person or not. Um, I personally have visited um, over 10, 10 such classes. You saw a couple of, of, of clips from that in the video. I also participated in some online class. And what I was particularly impressed by uh, was the innovation that our faculty displayed. Um, we have created entirely new classes that we've never taught before, perhaps most famously uh, a class on the, on the presidential election, which is taught, taught uh, by John Meacham and Dean Gere and uh, two other faculty, three other faculty members in the political science department. We have, I think, 100, 850 students participating. And when I was there, maybe by chance or by planning, I'm not quite sure, we had the uh, uh, speaker of the House, Nancy Pelosi, suddenly pop up and talk to the students. That was a, that's a great way, great example of our innovation in the classroom. So I'm very pleased of where we are on that. Of course, we're gonna to continue to evaluate and think about it. And I'm gonna hand it over to Provost Susan Vandy to add a few of her thoughts. Well, um, thank you, Chancellor, and good morning, everyone. And our faculty are so committed 
to making this the best possible experience for our students. Our faculty are at Vanderbilt because of their sincere devotion to student learning. And as Chancellor Deermeyer noted, they've been creative, they've been innovative in terms of how to adapt in-person classes to accommodate remote learning this semester. And they've continued to make improvements in real time, both during this semester and then as they continue to think forward, um, I'm tremendously proud of their efforts. They've been working with the Vanderbilt Center for Teaching. This is a world-class center that is, um, has many different resources, many different workshops available for faculty. And the primary goal is to make sure that all students have access to the Vanderbilt course experience, whether they're in person or fully remote. Now the synchronous portions of courses for the spring will continue to be taught in Nashville's central time zone. But we have many technology tools in Brightspace and other tools to help students access course materials and other resources at any time. We are continuing to work with our faculty as we think forward about the spring semester. Are there other types of audio, IT support that they need to make the remote experience as meaningful as possible? Are there other types of TA support, co-teaching models um, to really make the virtual alternative platforms which are in combination with the in-person experience as best as possible. All of these um, accommodations are needed for both the health and safety of our students as well as the health and safety of our faculty. But I assure you, our faculty share a common goal. And that goal is empowering education for all of our students. That hasn't changed during the pandemic and it won't change for the spring semester. Dining. This parent asks, are there plans to reopening, reopen dining halls? Well, thank you very much. The dining, of course, that's an important topic. So for, let me first make, make clear that the dining halls have been open, um, but it's not possible because of the physical distancing requirements for students to sit down and eat their food there. So what we've done is to support physical distancing, we've expanded outdoor dining options for our students, including dining tents, um, and we're looking for other ways to use these tents and to heat those tents as the weather gets cooler. Fortunately, we've had very mild temperatures and uh, today it's raining and it's heavily raining. But other than that, I think we've been fortunate from the weather point of view, we're continuing to think about that. And then there have been a whole variety of updates um, on dining options throughout the year. And we will continue to do that to meet the need of our students. And I'd like to hand it over now to Vice Chancellor Eric Kopstein who is in charge of university administration and also oversees our dining operations. Eric, take it away. Yeah, well, uh, thank you, Daniel. And I just want to express my gratitude to all of the parents and families who took the time to tune in today uh, for this virtual session. So just to underscore a couple of the points that Daniel's already made, we have definitely expanded our outdoor dining options. We have the dining tents and we have a way uh, that will activate shortly to heat those tents as the weather continues to get uh, cooler. There are a number of other things that we've done to really wholesomely meet the needs of our Vanderbilt students in terms of dining. So for example, we expanded our mobile ordering options for students this year, and we added campus dining pickup spots across the campus so that students can easily order meals online and then pick them up at a variety of convenient locations across campus. Students can all use their meals or their meal money for either in-person ordering or mobile ordering. And we've also switched all of our payment to contactless payment at all of our locations. Um, we've also provided a, really a range of additional options for dining, including expanded food truck offerings that have been very popular. We have a partnership with the food delivery service Grubhub. And I'll also mention that the Nicholas S. Zeppos College Dining Hall opened in August, which provides yet another additional permanent dining location for our students. So it's true that while dining, like so many other things on campus, has looked different this year, um, I want to emphasize that campus dining really has worked very hard to adjust and to meet the needs of our community 
while also keeping the health and the safety of all of our staff and students right at the forefront of their efforts. Your responses. And this is another question that hits close to home for me. What has changed about your advice for students on how to use their Vanderbilt experience for their future? For example, seniors who are trying to connect with the first jobs in their future careers. Thank you. Well, our education is intended to empower our students to pursue their career choices, their dreams. And I encourage all of our students, no matter whether they're freshmen or sophomores, juniors or seniors, to reach out to the career centers, which offers many helpful resources for all of our undergraduate students, no matter how far they're along in their thinking about their future. The team at the Career Center offers virtual coaching appointments that can connect you with job and internship opportunities. And they also continue virtual events to connect students with employers, work on uh, career building skills and so forth. We also have a, have a very strong alumni network with thousands of alumni who are willing to connect with you or mentor you on a particular career path as you're thinking about various industries and possibilities. But I'd like to add a more personal note as well. And this is something that I certainly think about as we're leading this university on a day-to-day -day basis. It's so easy to be overwhelmed by the day-to-day -day challenges and certainly during the time of COVID-19, but it's always important to think about the long-term perspective. I always, when I talk to my team about it, I say in my left pocket, I have the type of things that must be done today. In my right pocket, I have the types of things that position the university better for the next 10 years. And you should think about your educational experience in the same way. Yes, you gotta be able to deal with the current classes and catch up with the homeworks and make sure you have great conversations and you, and you learn what's at hand right in front of you. But just as importantly, it's important to think about the long-term aspects and to start thinking about what is it that you want to do after you leave Vanderbilt. This is an empowering education for you, but you need to own it and you need to start thinking seriously about what it is that you want to do after you become a proud graduate of Vanderbilt University. Thank you. Absolutely. Now moving on to the next question, we had one parent ask about how students are connecting with one another. They ask, what are you doing to have students socialize in a safe way? Yes, so this is, a, this is, a, this is one of the areas where I've been most impressed <clears throat> by, our, by our community overall, especially by our students. So uh, being able to connect socially in an environment of physical distancing can be particularly challenging. But I've been, I've been, I've been impressed by the amount of innovation, the new ideas, how people how connect, how residential faculty, heads of house do that, and how the students do it themselves. And you saw some examples of that earlier. Um, but we wanna, we're gonna continue to do that. We're gonna continue to think about ideas like that. We're doing that, for example, through the rec center, which is offering new ways to, for the students to engage in fitness activity in a safe and distanced way, such as outdoor classes, the yoga that you mentioned. But there's a whole variety of activities that they take place um, in the residential colleges as well. And I want to hand it over to Melissa Gosalfi, who's the Dean of the Martha Ingrams, Martha Rivers Ingrams Commons. She's also here with us today. Um, Melissa, can you give us some other examples of how students are connecting? Hi, of, of course, I'm happy to. And I want to share that I also have been incredibly impressed and inspired by the ways that students themselves are developing their own opportunities to connect but we're really doing a lot to try to help them make those connections. And I wanna share how much different programming there is available on campus. Um, as our testing numbers have, stayed, have um, stayed low over the weeks, we've been able to expand a lot of what we've been able to do to include many more uh, socially distanced in-person events. Beyond the events that are happening on the residence halls, all residential faculty have been hosting many events, always online, but also in person, so that they can connect with students, all first year students, regardless of where they're living. Just this past week, for example, North House made s'mores together around fire pits for their North Night series. West House is planning for pumpkin carving next week, and Crawford House has been hosting cornhole tournaments. So there's lots of chances for these kinds of small in-person gatherings. On the Commons, we've been thinking about our programming as an opportunity to build community and form connections. And so for that reason, we plan for programming series this year that invite students to come together repeatedly to talk about things that are of interest to them. 
So for example, we've had a programming series this year called uh, Homegrown Activism, Nashville Civil Rights and Justice, that has brought students together over multiple weeks to learn about Nashville's role in the civil rights movement and the way Nashville continues to play a role in activism in our nation. We also, of course, have an extensive series about voting and election, and that's um, featured di Dean's Dinners with Vanderbilt College Republicans, Vanderbilt College Democrats, and we've had debate watching, uh, live debate watching parties where we gather together to watch the debate with Vanderbilt debate and talk about what's happening. As a final example, I just want to share um, something that we do that's always been a tradition on the Commons, which is called Dean's Dinners. And Dean's Dinners are an opportunity for a small group of students to gather together over a special meal and have a conversation about something they wouldn't maybe otherwise get to talk about. Now we're hosting Dean's Dinners in the dining tent, which were already mentioned, um, catered by Vanderbilt Catering. And it's been a great way for students to get to know each other and to get to know other faculty on campus. We've hosted several Dean's Dinners in the dining tent so far this year, and at the end of every one, I see students pulling out their phones to exchange contact information. And that's really how we're thinking about these events, is opportunities for students to meet one another, connect, and then continue the conversations on their own. Thank you both for your responses, and thank you so much, Dean Grisafi, for joining us today. Moving on to our next question, we also had a question from a parent asking about student safety on campus. How is the university addressing and preventing sexual assault on campus, and what are other measures in place for student safety? The safety of our campus community is a top priority for all of us. And we know that the sexual offenses are some of the most underreported crimes, particularly on college campuses. So we always encourage people to report and are always working to create an environment in which people feel comfortable coming forward to report. And we hope our numbers reflect those efforts. Um, our efforts to prevent sexual assault on campus are ongoing. And uh, they begin before our STEMs actually arrive on campus. All our incoming students, whether first years or transfer graduate and professional students, are required to complete educational models, modules on preventing sexual violence that introduces them to the Vanderbilt policy. Tennessee state law, which is also relevant, on and, and on and off campus resources, and whether in, within law enforcement or the university and the relevant reporting options. Sexual assault prevention is also addressed during the first year week long, during the week long orientation for our first year students. Um, we have also continued to invest in the university's resources, such as Project Safe Center for Sexual Misconduct Prevention and responses to Title IX office and the Dean of Students office and Student Accountability offices. So we are, we are fully invested in this. Um, we are doing a lot, um, but we also need to be clear that no university is immune from the problem of campus sexual assault, and we know this firsthand. But we're committed to providing our community with the resources necessary to keep our campus safe. And I'd like to also ask August Washington he is the Senior Associate Vice Chancellor for Public Safety and Special Initiatives to speak a little bit more about um, overall student safety. August, take it away, please. Thank you, Dr. Dearmeyer. I appreciate the opportunity to come before you all this morning. As Dr. Dearmeyer um, stated, we have a number of internal programs through our campus partners, such as Project SAFE and the Dean of Students Office. But also, uh, Vanderbilt has a fully comprehensive um, public safety department uh, that is actually triple accredited um, uh, in their uh, law enforcement and security services, as well as accredited through our communication services. And some of the programs that we, we, we um, have provided um, that's external to the, just the educational model has been um, active patrols on or about the campus and areas contiguous to the campus. As you all know that this year being so unusual that we have an, an, um, a greater number of students than off campus than we've had in the previous years. And Vanderbilt has, um, you know, collaboratively um, worked at ramping up our security that where we patrol um, uh, to our external areas that are near the campus, as well as we respond to the locations that students that a number of our students that are living at. And, um, and we've also activated this year, uh, what we call our, our um, expanded our bandy ride programs to include our point to point program where students that are studying on campus as um, if, they're, if, if it gets to the late hours, 
where darkness has um, arrived and students can uh, call BUPS for uh, rides back to their particular apartment complexes. And one of the other programs we've done is um, our public health ambassador program, which has been a program that's actually been featured in the Chronicle of Higher Education this year on encouraging our students to uh, be safe as well as to comply with our return to campus uh, procedures um, re re relative to COVID-19. And so, um, and, and we've taken security to what we call an ambassador approach that it's much more of an encouraging for safety than rather than just an old fashioned model of enforcement. So we've done a lot of things and, and, and Vanderbilt's kind of leading the field on doing these things to just create a much more safer environment for our students and our campus community. Thank you both for your responses. For our final question today, I wanna to close with a question that I know I am curious about. We heard from a number of parents wanting to know about commencement. What are the current plans for this event in the spring? Uh, we know that commencement is among the highlights of the Vanderbilt experience for many of you. And we're working on plans for the event in, this, in the spring. Commencement at this point is planned for May 13th and May 14th. Um, I know that many of you, um, those are particular those of you that are seniors are looking ahead to the spring and uh, particularly to commencement. And um, we need to, we want, we're going to keep you informed as details are finalized. Um, having said that, there is, we're going to, we will have to reevaluate sit situations as the, uh, as the COVID-19 pandemic um, continues. And we're going to monitor the situation. For now, we're going to keep with the current plan. But um, these are unprecedented times of profound and persistent uncertainty. And we all need to keep that in mind. Well, Veer, I know that was the last question. And I want to thank you um, for the wonderful job that you did today uh, in emceeing this event this morning. I'm also particularly grateful to Anne and John McDonald for joining us today and for every one of us for being part of this uh, most unusual uh, parent weekend. I want to end with a, with a personal message. And when we started this semester, this semester unlike any other, um, I told the students in a direct message and I said, it's, it's now up to you. It's up to your choices. It's up to you to step up and prove the doubters wrong, to show that we can rely on you in being able to do your part in continuing the education that we all so cherish. And you have done it. You have done it. The students have done it. They have stepped up and they have done what was required of them. But it wasn't easy and we're not done. Um, we, are, we are still in the middle of the COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, things are still looking challenging for all of us. And so we'll, it will require the effort of all of us, especially of our students to continue and to continue to do what they have been doing so admirable over the last weeks. And for you parents, that requires for you to support your students even more, to encourage them, to lend the support that they need, but also to remind them to step up when it's most needed, to maintain what's necessary for us as a community to be safe, even though it presents new challenges for us. You're part of our great university and your engagement and support dramatically and fundamentally contributes to the success of our entire community and never more than in the current times. Thank you very much and enjoy the rest of your day, the rest of the weekend and the rest of the semester. Dr. Meyer, and thank you to all of you again for joining us today. We will end today's event with a performance from some of my favorite campus celebrities, Vanderbilt's award-winning acapella group, The Melodors. The Melodors didn't let the restrictions arising from COVID-19 keep them from sharing their music with fans. Their performances recorded using video conference technology have been viewed more than 1.5 million times and have been featured on Good Morning America, ABC News, and NBC News. I'm also proud to say that I have friends in the Melodors, so I get to hear them practice pretty often, and I can vouch for how good they are. I hope you enjoy their performance. On behalf of all Vanderbilt students, thank you again for your love, support, and encouragement. Anchor down and go doors. Whoa.
Hey everyone, this is Quinn from the Melodors. I hope you guys enjoyed our mirror Zoom video. We hope you guys are all staying safe. I know we are here at Andy, and we're really looking forward to being able to see all of you guys soon. We miss you. <laughs>